What's going on, guys? So, today I got something special from Shockwork, and been waiting for about three months now. I, I ordered it, I think, in November, so during Black Friday, and it is now March 10th, 2020. So it's been about three months, four months here. So I got a Shockwork rear bumper, and uh, can't wait. Just came in, I think, not more than 20 minutes ago. I'm gonna open it up and see what it's like. That box is amazing, man. They reinforced it pretty good. Look at that. Put two by fours here and there, all around the corners. I can see why it's 333 pounds. Well, there was no instructions. Looked everywhere in the box, so I'm gonna contact Shockworks. The last time that I ordered a Shockwork item, I ordered the Rock sliders and they didn't send me enough bolts. So I'm wondering if they did the same thing this time. Um, I haven't checked yet. Still have to get the manual from them. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's nicely packaged like always and the finish is super good. Take up all these bolts, one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We got two on the side. Those gonna come off. Oh, that came off easy. One over here on this side too. And now we gotta take these off. So it looks like, let's see, looks like that's a 10 millimeter right there. And then these ones you can probably take off using a screwdriver or a panel tool. There's gonna be, there's gonna be four of them, I guess. Let's see, let's see, let's see it. Well, maybe five of them, let's see. I guess just one, one here, one here, those are bolts. And then the one here, there. And then one here. So on each side, there's gonna be four of these plastic clip-ins. And then there's also gonna be four of the bolts. So you just have to loosen up these bolts take out the clippings and then the mud flap comes right off. All right, so next you want to take off the rubber grommet down here. Take a screwdriver or a flathead. And then there's gonna be some bolts down here too. I think there's one, two, and three right there. So I'm gonna get those off on each side. Okay, and then next you wanna hold on to this part here. And slightly pull it out. Just snap right off. Corner. Oh, shit, come right off. Okay. Okay. Voila. 
it came off. My car has the parking sensors, so that wire has to come off. I don't really care if it breaks or not, so I'm just letting it hang because I'm getting rid of it, so. But if you do care, you should take it off. Take off that connector first before you get rid of the bumper. I'm guessing we're gonna have to toss this. This is no longer needed. Where the styrofoam piece? Throw that out. Man, that is ugly. Next, you will need to take off your spare tire. So grab your spare tire tools from the compartment on the back left. And then start twisting it clockwise once you have inserted it in. And the spare tire should start coming down. This is why I say that Palatium race wheel makes some cheap ass wheels. See that shit? This is a brand new wheel when I put it on. And look at that. Comes right off. You see these gold plates? Comes right off, man. That is cheap as freak, dude. Cheap ass wheels. Relation race wheels, man. Look at that. Wow. And a stud came off one of those fake B lockers. I don't know, man. Cheap wheels. I guess you get what you pay for, man. All right, and then I'll be taking off this thing right here. I think it's 10 millimeter. All right, so next you wanna take off the hitch hitch bolts. These are 17 millimeters. There's four of them. And then you also want to take off the factory recovery, which is on this side over here. There's gonna be two bolts, both 17 millimeters. Alright, so next you want to measure down 6 inches from right before it meets the corner, right before it turns. Then go down 6 inches and then make your mark. I would double check and triple check that your measurements are correct. You can only cut once and if you cut more than what you're supposed to, then you might have some issues. So Schrockwork actually recommended that you start from the uh, rear hatch area and then and then make your way across to the fender area. But I did the exact opposite because it was just a lot easier for me to do it this way. I would recommend you take your time and make sure that there is no bend on the painter's tape. And, and I do recommend you using at least a 2 inch width painter's tape just so that um, if you do have any cringes, it's not that severe. And I would double and triple check your measurements after you have applied the tape.
So as you can see there, what I did was I just took a ruler, measured it across, made sure that the edge here is aligned with the straight edge. So that's good enough for me. I went ahead and I measured this two inches. So that's the two inch mark from here to here, that's two inches. And then I just laid a piece of tape from here onwards until it met the intersection right there. So that's the two inch mark and then I just laid it down. So I did not follow the truck work instructions for cutting the bumper after this part because they called for cutting off the middle piece here that would eventually leave an opening between the bumper and the chassis. So what I did was uh, in the next portion of the video, you will see how I cut the bumper. Update. I did trim this to make it fit the bumper. Um, what I had before was not working. So basically what I did was um, I just cut it across where it meets the uh, bottom panel here. I just cut right it, right in between all the way across. Um, and then I saved just a tad bit here. And then I did the same thing all the way across and that worked. So that's how you keep this middle piece here. I do know that they tell you to cut it, but I kept mine and uh, it closes just fine. So for the bumper cutting portion, I use an angle grinder along with the Dremel tool. I would recommend you take your time and have a second person holding the bumper so that you do not mess up. So with the amount of rust on my rear frame, I, I decided to just sand it down. Um, so I use a 40 grit grinder and I grind it down to bare metal for some of the parts um, where I thought, thought that the rust was almost gone and then I uh, painted over that with some pour 15 um, and that turned out very nice. It only took about a good day and a half to dry completely so um, if you do use this product uh, be careful wear eye protection, wear gloves. Um, this stuff does not come off of your skin for a few days uh, and wear a respirator because this thing is strong, have plenty of ventilation. Um, pour, pour 15 is paint over rust and it's mostly used for underbody coating um, in the, the upper Midwest where we have a lot of snow and a lot of salt is used on the roads. So if you do plan on using this stuff, I would highly recommend it. Um, if you can recall that the frame was super rusty, it made it look brand new. I would highly recommend you guys lay down all your nuts and bolts and parts. Shockwork did not send me a few parts, for example, the shims. Um, they did eventually send that over, but that took about four days. Um, and then they were missing a bunch of flange nuts and bolts so I had to run to the parts store a few times to grab those parts but other than that I did lay them out and label them this is for the jerry can for two jerry cans to mount it on I think this is the leveler I'm not sure what the fuck it is this is the 3 8 inch stick nut there's gonna be two of them uh, this is the 3 8 inch flat lock washer and the one in, one and a quarter bolt 3 8 inch uh, these are a pair of the M12 by 1.25 millimeter by 50. This is the M8 by 125 by 35. These are the half inch by one and a half, and these are the half inch by one and a quarter. They're just a little bit difference in height. These ones I think are for the Jerry. I mean for the uh, tire carrier, because um, I do not know what they're used for. And uh, there is no instructions, so I'll figure these out along the way. Else, there's the half inch flange nuts, a bunch of half inch washers, and a bunch of half inch lockers. And there's gonna be your uh, two half plates, I mean, sorry, two plates, uh, half inch stick nuts, and your other two half inch stick nuts. It's my second time ordering something from Shockwork. And all I can say is that each and every single time, they've never sent me the right amount of 
stuff that I need. So each and every single time I gotta find my own way to do things. So I think this will be my last time ordering from Shockwork because it is pissing me off and the instructions are very vague. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I was supposed to do this before I put on the bumper, but it's just loosely on there. It's not on there permanently yet. So first thing that you need to do is put on your half inch plastic piece. I think it goes like that. And then your second quarter inch plastic piece goes in like that. You need a 532 Allen wrench. And then four of these, uh, don't know what size they are, but uh, they're the one with Allen wrench, should 55, 32, four of those. And then you're also gonna need, um, let's see, three locking nuts here and three of these as well. I only got two here, but I'll grab one of each after I'm done here. So first, take your 532, tighten that up. And then thread in the rest here. And then put on the locking nut and the washer here. All right, so I know that some people are gonna ask, why don't you show like a close up with how to do it? I mean, it's super easy, so I don't think you're gonna need to know how to put on a locking nut and washer, right? I mean, it. all right, so now we can finally bolt it in, right? So. For this part here, you're gonna need four of the M12 the washer and just tighten it up. All right, so now take your 19 millimeter and tighten it up loosely. Don't make it too hard because you still got some other bolts that you gotta. All right, so. Could not get the bolts up in here, so I decided to re-tap it. Because as, because as you can see, these bolt holes are super rusty, so the bolt won't even thread up. So I took an M12 by 1.25 tap, and then I re-tapped it, or retraced the hole so that the bolt can go through. So just finishing that up here. I think the bolt can go through now, so let's test fit the bolt after I get done tracing it here. All right, so next you wanna take your M12 by 1.25 by 50 millimeters, and you wanna just thread it in on the, on the underbody. These two bolts are next to the exhaust, and then there's gonna be two underneath of the hitch here. And then two on the other side. So these shims just go underneath of the car. So right where the bumper mates in. It mates to the uh, tow hook here. I believe it's gonna slide it in here and that should be the shim. So I gotta take off these bolts and then slide it in. And then bolt it back up. And then after that you wanna stick in the stick nut. So I would recommend you bend it like this and then you feed it and then you feed it through the hole here like that and then once that is there you want to take your, let's see, what was this again? I think this was a half inch by one and a half with a lock washer and a washer. And you just kind of fish it through there. So um, you gotta make sure that the, let's see if I can see, that the uh, stick nut is in the hole and then fish it through the top. It's, it takes some practice, so 
keep at it. But once you're done, then it should be like that. It should all move in one piece. All right. So the snake nut is in. I loosely tied that up. I loosely tied this up as well. And then uh, I think we're ready to put on the um, plastic piece here and see what it looks like. So at this point in time, you can put on your plastic bumper. Uh, the reason being is because we want to make sure that the bumper is aligned uh, with the metal bumper. So make sure that the gaps are correct. Uh, make sure that uh, the plastic bumper is not hitting on the metal bumper too hard and make sure that the gaps are what you want. So this part you can skip if you are not going to install the hitch receiver that came with the kit. Uh, I am, so I just took off the six bolts that held um, the hitch in place and then I slide up the hitch and then I just re-bolted the bolts back into the frame. And so this part is fairly easy, pretty straightforward. Next you want to loosely install the driver's side wing support. You use the provided M8 bolt with the 5 16th washer and lock washer to loosely secure the bracket to the frame. All right, so next you wanna take your half inch stick nut and you wanna bend it something like this, all right? Bend it where it looks something like this. And then you find the hole on top of here and then you feed it through, stick it in and uh, feed it through. Let's see if I can do it one handed. Uh, let's see here. Make sure it goes in. All right, and then make sure that it lines up here, nice and even like that, and then just thread the bolt through. All right, I think I've got it in. Oh, that was a pain in the ass. All right, so this next step. Um, you're going to have to bolt in the uh, half inch by one and a quarter um, bolts through the two um, frame, the uh, two holes here that mounts to the bumper to the frame. So just earlier we got done with this one, right? So now we got to go in here and attach that. So all you really have to do is just slide it in here and out the other end. And then, once that's in there like that, just attach the nut, the flange nut, and that should be it. Two flange out, so. That's it for this side. And I'm not going to tighten this up yet, I'm just going to wait till like after everything is done, and then I'm going to make sure that the uh, bumper is aligned, and then I'll make sure that uh, all the bolts are tightened up. So, that's going to be the last step. First, I'm going to make sure that bumper is aligned. Alright, so this is going to be a two-person process. Alright, so this one was a pain that I had to do, me and my wife. So, my wife had to hold this piece to align the hole, and then I had to fish in the uh, stick nut. This is the 3 8 inch stick nut right here. So, I had to fish that in, and then I bolted it in. Uh, she was holding this piece, so I think this right here is a two-person job. I'm still going to do the bottom one right here. All right, so we finally got this side done. Um, as mentioned before, uh, just got done with this half-inch stick nut down where we put the 3 8 stick nut and then uh, tied it up and then just got finished bolting this side up here as well loosely. And now we just have to align the bumper and make sure that it's fitting properly. All right, so I just got done tying up all the bolts now. So 
I started off by tying up the uh, four bolts here. And then I followed up with these two. And then I tied up the, those two along with the bottom two on the hitch. And then uh, two up here on the tow hook. And then I tied up uh, the beam here on uh, both sides. And that's basically it for uh, the pumper. Um, I have to put this back on still. But that should be pretty easy. Let's do that right now, actually. So yeah, just gonna put the exhaust back in the hanger and then uh, we should be good to go. Everything is now tying up. All right, now that's back. Let's take a look at the bumper again before we install the tire carrier. So the gap did get closer. So I think what I'm going to be doing is I'll be trimming the back here to make it at least a half inch gap. Um, but as of now, I'm just going to leave it. We can save that for a different time. Other than that, it looks great. Now I think it's ready for the tire carrier. Shockwork did not send me the grease package, so I just have some uh, grease laying around, and that's what I'll be using. Um, some, you know, regular Babylon grease here. So I'm just gonna grease it up. And then you just turn it up. Yeah, so I went ahead and I greased up the bottom hole here and the top as well. And then we're gonna prep it to get ready to drop it in. So how it works is that uh, there's this one inch bolt. And uh, the two bronze are supposed to be in the, the insides like that. And then and then the uh, tire carrier goes in the middle here, and then um, the bolt goes through, and then you would thread it, uh, the nut in from the bottom. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna wash it here. All right, so I don't have the big adjustable wrenches, so I'll be using my tool that I use for my hitch ball. This is a one and one half tool you can find it from like Home Depot I think it was like 10 bucks or 12 bucks so again this is a one and one half size I'm sure you can see it I think it's too blurry to see it but let's do it I did out. I did at first, but uh, I loosened it up some, and now it's good. All right. So I got this installed. Perfect. It was just one of those. Uh, so I forgot what size because the instruction did not tell me what size they were, but they came with the. Uh, package of hardware, so I'm just using these. I think they're the right ones. I would tell you guys the size, but I don't know the size. All right, guys, just got back from the hardware store because it turns out that Shockwork did not send me 
or give me all of the hardware. So I bought seven plunge nuts and uh, four more washers. So let's get this done. Basically, right now I'm trying to work on the uh, trying to work on the tire carrier here. So I'll just loosely put it on just to see what it looks like. So these are not supposed to be here. So this is supposed to be for the high lift jack. This, these, goes right here. Let's twist it on for now so that I don't lose them. But, uh, I might move this down. So I'm gonna move this down for one more. So I think that the top one is like a 32 inch tire. And then the second one down, I think, is the 32 and a half or 33 tires. So I'm going to use that. That's what happens. All right, so just to show you guys what I'm doing here. Again, lock nut, washer, put the bolt in. And then behind here, I'm going to put a washer and then a nut. Yeah, so I think you can put the tire as close as possible or as far out as possible. I'm just gonna probably put it out like as close as possible. I'm gonna test out this to see if it's uh, the right. Mm, yeah, let's leave that that. Test that out and see what it's like. So I'm just measuring the gap here and uh, determining how far I should leave it. So I think I'm just gonna use this gap right here and then tighten it up. Looks pretty darn good. All right, so the last thing was the jerry can. Um, they gave me a lot of bolts that I don't think was necessary. Um, but they did not give me enough nuts. So, again, I got to run to the store to grab some nuts. But the jerry can was pretty basic uh, bolt on. There's going to be six main ones if you have the dual jerry can holders. Two up there, two on the bottom, and then two there. Um, I just use a lock nut with a washer, and then um, in the back, I, I did the same thing uh, with a washer and a nut. So, pretty basic. And then you have to uh, put uh, a nut and a lock washer in between here as well, but uh, I'm missing three of them. so. I'm gonna run to the store quick, and then once I get that done, and then that's that should hold it. Um, I did test it out. The jerry can does fit, so that's good. I now have to put on the license here, and then we should be done. Shouldn't be too hard. What's going on, guys? Another day, so I'm trying to finish up the bumper install today. I don't know how long it's been, so I spent a few days trying to figure out what this was. This is, let's see, I guess it's a stop for 
the license plate so this goes in place of where a license plate would go so you got to take off the license plate from its factory location and then put this in Looks good. Good enough for me. That's it, guys.